to Old Ways Gardening and Prepping. My name is Teresa. I'd like to welcome you to my backyard this beautiful sunny and cool day for May. So I am thankful for it. Where I'm standing now is going to be my next labor of love raised bed project. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build a raised bed using the straw bale technique and I'm going to be growing sweet potatoes in it. And it's going to be a 10 day process. It's going to take 12 days before I can plant. So this video is going to be uh, a little bit of showing of each day working the straw bales, building the raised bed and getting it ready. I hope you all enjoy and this video inspires you. I'll see you here back in a little bit. Okay, I have mowed the grass down extremely close to the ground, laid down the weed barrier. I have my six bales of straw lined up. And now I am fixing to build the frame. Now, most people don't build frames. I plan on building a frame because as this breaks down, it's going to become... A raised bed all right it's getting hot and it's time for me to get to digging holes to set post well had to take a small break at least I got the post in the ground and I got the sides well one side up storms aren't going to last long but man, at least it has cooled down. All right, heading for under the carport for the ending of the rain that's coming. Yep, this is going to be an interesting quick little heat storm. And here comes the rain. At least I don't have to worry about my mud dehydrating. Alright, I'm going to sit down and take a break. I'm getting wet. Okay, welcome back. I finally have my frame built. I'm going to have to put a, a stake on each side, I noticed. But it's still going to look good and it's going to function. Now, one thing I am happy to say that all these materials is recycled materials. Because last summer I helped tear down a house trailer. And I saved absolutely as much as possible as I could. And the, the siding on the on the trailer or the sides and the underpinning or the end caps now I've already put in two big buckets of 
grass clippings and I'm fixing to spread them out because I'm going to make mine just a little bit different. I'm going to give it a basis instead of just setting the straw bales on the weed barrier. Because like I said, eventually in a year or two, this is going to be a, a fully compo composted and ready to roll uh, raised bed. Since I'm using weed barrier, you're going to have to be careful using a rake in it because you can poke holes in it. And I definitely do not want to poke any holes in it. And yes, that is steam that you're seeing coming off the grass because it had started composting in the tub. Next, I'm adding shredded leaves and apparently leaf juice. And plus another thing, I'm fixing to add four bags of topsoil. And this way it also gives another layer for the sweet potatoes to grow in. And plus, since I'm going to be using so much natural organic fertilizer, I want something to catch it. I don't want it just to go straight into the ground and be lost.
and doing it this way by the time the straw bales break down this and the bales are going to be so nutrient dense it's going to be wonderful All right now that that's done it's time to put the bales of straw back in here And you want to turn them on their sides so that the rope is on the sides, not the top. Okay, thankfully the hardest part's over with. The rest of everything is easy as can be. Of course, the straw's a little heavier than it was because it rained, of course. All right, now I'm going to fertilize it. This is day one, and you want to fertilize and then water extremely heavy. And this is organic blood meal. Next is the stinky stuff, the organic bone meal. Now this is just an extra that I'm adding. It's extremely well composted 
and I've sifted chicken manure. Now this stinky stuff is my homemade all natural liquid fertilizer. It's a mixture of my fish emulsion and a liquid homemade fertilizer I affectionately call gag maggot because it stinks. Now that you have it good and fertilized, now you're going to soak the bell. Because you want to make sure that you get the fertilizer down into the bale. So if it's a straight bale, you're not going to be able to grow anything in them. The fertilizer helps start to the decomposing uh, phase. And then that way you'll, it'll be nutrient dense and you'll be able to grow. You can grow all kinds of things in straw bale garden. Mine's going for sweet potatoes, because that's what I'm wanting to grow. Because unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but at the moment, my sweet potato pan is loaded with garlic.
Alright, I'm going to bring you back as soon as I'm done watering. Because it takes about three to five minutes per bale to get it completely watered in. And I'll see you back here in just a bit. Okay, I am finally done with day one. Day one is the hardest part of this whole procedure. That's when you put in the most work. Now that they are all soaked, they get to rest for 24 hours, and then I'll come back out here tomorrow. Now, the rest of the video won't be as long as day one, because all the work really goes into day one. I, I look forward to seeing you. Like I said, this is going to be the 10-day process. And that way, I hope it encourages you to also try straw bale growing as well. And like I said, straw, not hay, because you'll have nothing but a whole thing of, of grass growing if you use hay. I, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Hello, and welcome back. This is day two of starting a straw bale garden. Today, all we have to do is water the bales in. You won't be adding fertilizer today. Now what you do is you're going to go through the whole, each straw bale and soak it very well. And that's all that you'll be doing for today. And then I'll bring you back tomorrow. See you then. Hello. Welcome back to day three of the straw bale garden. And today we are going to fertilize it. And I'm going to water the bales a little bit first because it's really windy we have storms coming and i don't want my bone meal to blow everywhere Okay, first on the agenda, I am going to put organic bone meal. And next will be the organic blood meal. I sprinkle about a handful per bale. No, about a handful or two bales.
now I have my very well composted chicken manure. And this is a mixture of my homemade fish emulsion and my homemade uh, fertilizer, liquid fertilizer known as Gaga Maggot because it's strong and yeah, when it's brewing it is nasty. And you'll want to give each, now you can use whatever liquid fertilizer you would like to. Uh, and you want to give each bale a good dose. I can already, before I started, I was looking at the bales, oh, and I have a worm. Before I was before I started, I looked at the bales, and I can already see the, the breakdown in them, the difference. Like I said in the beginning, this garden, this straw bale garden is going to be for my sweet potatoes. And they grow wonderful in straw bale garden. And also, so do regular potatoes as well. But you can grow just about any vegetable in a straw bale garden. What I'm going to do is continue to soak each bale really good. You want to make sure that all your fertilizer is soaked down into your bale. And after I'm done with that, I'm done for day three. And I'll see you tomorrow.
Hello and welcome to day four. Well, today I will not be watering the bales because we had some heavy downpours due to storms rolling through and they have been very well soaked. So, I won't be watering today and I'll see you tomorrow. Hello, welcome back. We are finally at day five. We are at the halfway mark. And I can already tell that the bells are really starting to break down nicely, which is exactly what you want to see. And day five is fertilized day. So I'm going to start out with blood meal. And of course, next is bone meal. Next is a good healthy dose of well decomposed uh, chicken manure. Next is my homemade liquid fertilizer. Now you can, it's a basis of two fertilizers. I used a little more fish emulsion today, which you can just use straight fish emulsion as well. And your favorite uh, liquid fertilizer. I'm going organic, so I'm hoping you will be inspired to go organic as well. So it's time to give a good healthy dose. Next up stinks. And now as usual it's time to water in the bell.
going to make sure to water water in the bales really really good make sure that your fertilizer uh, soaks into the bale and you're going to water every bale in really good and that's it for day five and i will see you tomorrow Well, day six, and apparently Mother Nature decided to help me out. We had a whole lot of rainfall, so don't have to water on day six. It was done naturally. All right, see you. See you tomorrow. Welcome back to day seven. And we'll be fertilizing on day seven. And also another thing I've been doing is poking holes to make sure that the bales are breaking down and they're breaking down nicely. I couldn't do this when I first started. So I've gone through, broke them up. That way I'm gonna make sure that all the fertilizer makes it down into the bell. So I'm gonna start out with blood mill. Next on the bone mill. Good for a which is my all natural base fertilizer and pitch
Uh, one thing I was going to say, I have noticed that I have a little wheat growing, but that's okay. I'm just going to pluck them out as they come up. And of course, today's been one of those days that nothing wants to work or it wants to break. My watering wand broke. So now it's time to water in the bell. Okay, and I'll continue to water the bales until they're very good and saturated. Now, I've also noticed that I have a space over here and one there and a big one down there. What I'm going to start doing is mixing uh, grass clippings and uh, topsoil and fill in those. And that'll also give more nitrogen and, and soil for the sweet potatoes to grow in. Alright, that's it for today. I will continue to water them in very heavily. They are really breaking down very well now. And I will see you tomorrow for day 8. Okay, it's day 8. And it's time to water the bells in real good. So I'm going to saturate the bales real good. I forgot and run off and left my tripod in the house. So you can definitely tell that the bales are really starting to break down now. And we are down pretty much to the home stretch. Alright, I'm going to water each bell in. And I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, we are to day nine. The last and final time that we will fertilize, thankfully. This has been a labor of love. And I am looking forward to seeing how well these grow. So I'm going to get started on bone meal first.
next on the blood mill. Since this is the final and last feeding, I'm going to feed it a little heavier. And this is the very well composted chicken manure. Now this is my homemade fish emulsion and my liquid fertilizer. Well, the only thing left to do is water it in real good. And today I've got to go get me a new wand sprayer. Now I'm just going to slowly let that soak into the bell and then I'm going to keep soaking it in until all the fertilizer has worked its way down into the bell and this is the last stretch for the fertilizer 
there's it is fertile they are fertilized plenty enough to sustain life they're breaking down nicely and i will bring you back tomorrow for the very last day hello and welcome back we are finally to day 10 thankfully it's been a labor of love now today is the final watering in of the bale and I'm going to get started on that. Okay, I'm going to let that soak in for a little while before I water them some more. Now, I've decided instead of waiting two days to plant, I'm going to wait for five days to plant my sweet potatoes in them because we have been unseasonably cool. So, and we're supposed to be in the 80s next few, let's see, three or four days, and that way it'll give time for the bells to really break down, to rest, to compost and of course if they start looking a little more uh, dry I'm going to water them in those days and I'm going to work in filling in the gaps that way more sweet potatoes can grow now I am looking forward to this I have seen some amazing results not in a raised bed but just growing them in bale and I'm looking forward to a really good harvest this fall. Now my sweet potato slips are growing very nicely and it won't be long before they're ready to plant. And I will bring you back when I plant the bales. I hope this video inspires you also to try doing a straw bale gardening. And like I said, make sure it's straw bales and not hay bales because if it's hay bales you're going to grow nothing but grass and it'll also give me time because i ha i noticed my luck as always i grow hay i mean grow uh wheat coming up and what i'm going to do is give it time to get a little bit bigger and i'm going to pull them out that way it won't be any competition for my sweet potatoes to grow and I will bring you back on when I get ready to plant the sweet potatoes in the bales. I hope this inspires you to also try straw bale gardening in, in a, also because you don't have to build a raised bed. You can just tie them around with wire and that'll keep them together as well. Now I've seen many different vegetables, even flowers, grown in straw bales and I'm looking forward to this. 
I hope you click the like and subscribe button so you can come along with on more adventures. This one has been a big one for me because it took quite a while to finally get here. Please click the bell notification so you'll be notified when I upload another video. Everyone take care. Get outside. Get some natural vitamin D. Dig in the soil. It's healthy and healing for you. And everyone be blessed and take care. I look forward to seeing you in my next video.